This video is being provided by the American Student Achievement Institute, and the purpose of the video is to help schools administer the College and Career Readiness Survey. So during this video, we'll be talking about four things. First, we'll do a, an overview of the survey. Then we'll look at the survey reports, and there's two kinds of reports, the student group reports and the student list generator reports. We'll talk about how to set up the survey for your school and then how to administer the survey with your students. So let's begin with the overview. So the survey is designed for all students in grades K through 12. Um, students in grades 3 through 12 take an online survey, where students in grades K2 take a teacher-read survey. So the survey is actually two surveys. The first survey um, covers student choices. So that survey asks students about their plans for the future, both their career plans and their post-secondary plans. And then it also asks about student choices, the choices that they've made during this school year related to areas that impact student achievement. So for this survey, group data is available and students may opt to share their individual responses with educators in the district so they can receive individualized guidance. The second survey is the root causes survey. This survey helps us understand why students are making or not making the student choices that we hope that they will make. The root causes survey consists of three different question sets, the guidance needs questions, the counseling needs questions, and the perceptions of the school counselor. All of those question sets are optional, and when schools set up the survey, they can choose to include those question sets or not include those question sets. Student group data is available for the root cause questions, but individual responses for the root cause questions are never available um, for an individual student. Okay, um, then, um, in terms of student privacy, we've gone to great lengths to make sure that we follow um, all the FERPA requirements for student privacy. Um, first of all, the root cause survey data uh, was designed so that student responses are never linked to a student's name or any other information that may, may be used to identify the student. So as a reminder, I'm going to go back one slide. The root cause questions cover students' guidance, individual guidance needs, their counseling needs, and then what they think about the school counselor. So those responses are set up in the system in a way that makes it technologically impossible for anyone to connect the responses to those questions with um, information that may identify the students. So in terms of student privacy, we've worked with attorneys to help us make sure that we are compliant with FERPA and all um, applicable Indiana codes. And um, the attorneys have said that ASA takes necessary steps to protect all student data, which comes under their control. We also asked our attorneys to um, give their opinion on whether or not parent consent is required to give the survey. And their determination was that parental consent is not required in Indiana. Um, the Indiana statute specifically speaks to surveys which a student is required to participate in. And our survey as structured makes it clear that this is a voluntary survey, so parent permission is not required. Although in some school districts, it may be your desire to ask for parent permission, and that is an individual district um, determination. Okay, so let's look at the data reports. Um, and again, there's two different kinds of reports. I'm gonna start out with the student group reports. So, um, as an example, um, some of the questions in the student group reports um, answer, give you information about student engagement. So do you usually ask your teachers for help when you're, you're, when you're confused? And the students just say yes or no. Do you almost always turn your homework in on time? Were you absent fewer than 10 times this year? Were you sent to the office this year? So those are student engagement questions. Um, and you can get group data for those, um, for those responses. Um, here's examples of future plan questions. Um, what do you plan to do during the first year of high school? Um, and then we give lots of different options. What type of high school diploma do you expect to receive if it's an Indiana student? And, and also um, 
we, we give the Indiana responses for that. Um, if you are a school that's outside of Indiana, the Indiana questions are not on your student surveys. Student choice questions, did you, these are things that we're asking students, did you choose to do these things this year? Did you visit a college campus? Did you complete the Indiana College Cost Estimator? Did your parents attend a financial aid program? Um, and again, all of our questions are age group appropriate. Um, so with these questions about, you know, did you complete an Indiana College Cost Estimator? That would not be on the third grade survey, but would be on the 12th grade survey. Guidance needs, these ask questions about what the students know. And if you find something that the kids don't know, that may then tell you that there's a guidance need, that students need to be taught these things. So can you describe the level of education that was required for jobs that interest you? Do you know how to find jobs that match your interests? Can you demonstrate effective practices for interviewing? Um, and then in these questions, the answer responses were simply yes, no, or not sure. Counseling needs, um, these questions ask students about which um, um, social emotional situations are making it difficult for them to succeed in school. So, and that's the, the, the prompt is, are these things making it difficult for you to succeed in school? So controlling my anger is making it difficult for me to succeed at school. Fighting is making it difficult. Drugs and alcohol is making it difficult. And this data, um, as, as in all of the questions that are, appear on the, um, the root cause survey, are, this data is only available to counselors um, and um, the counseling needs data is only available to counselors and then individual data for all the root cause questions is never available. Okay, same thing with the perceptions of the counselors. This data is only available to counselors. Group data is not available to others. Um, does your school counselor care about you? Does your counselor have high goals for you? Does your counselor believe that all students are important? So again, individual data is never available for this uh, data, um, but group data is available, but only to the counselors. Okay, so let's look at how you might use um, these, these reports, the group data reports. Um, and let's just say we're gonna look at one question. Do you know where to find extra help um, in the, in, for courses if you need it. So in this situation, um, and this is a real school's data, 75% of the students said that they do know where to find extra help, but 13% said no, they don't know where to find extra help, and 12% weren't sure. So we have a quarter of the kids in this school who did not know where to find extra help um, if, if, if they needed it, if they, they were struggling in their courses. So as a counselor, you might be wondering, well, which students are, are not knowing where to find extra help? Is it across the board or is it just some student groups? So we can start looking at the drill down reports. You may be curious about grade levels. You know, maybe you might be thinking, well, maybe just the ninth graders that don't know where to find extra help, but after kids have been in our school a while, um, they would know. So as we look through the grade level data, we say, see, yes, there is some increase in the percentage that know where to find extra help, but it's not a big increase between ninth grade and, and 12th grade. So, you know, in terms of grade level, it really is kind of across the board um, in all grades. Then let's say you get curious about lunch program. You may be thinking, you know, well, maybe it's just the uh, free and reduced lunch students who don't know where to find extra help. And so you look at this data and there is a bigger discrepancy here. Um, we had 79% of the paid lunch kids said they knew where to find extra help, but only 71% of the free and reduced. So that may, you know, beg the conversation, well, why don't the free and reduced kids know where to find extra help um, at the same rate as their, their peers, their paid lunch peers? And, you know, what, what do we need to do about that? And then another drill down that you might find interesting is um, you can also drill down by self-reported report card, report card grades. And in this drill down, we find a huge discrepancy. Students who say that they get A's and B's in the report card tend to know where to find extra help, but students who um, tend to get D's and F's on the report card do not know where to find extra help. So this, again, this may beg you to like go after those kids. Let's find out who those kids are. Um, and if we look at the number of students, we find out that there are 25 students 
um, who report getting D's and F's who don't know where to find it, extra help. And because this is um, um, part of the student list generator, we can go in and find those students and, um, and contact them. So, okay. So let's then talk about the student list generator. Student list generator. This is a way that you can figure out individual students who answered um, the names of individual students who answered specific questions in the goal survey in specific ways, and then you can choose to contact those students by email or um, or by letter or you know different ways. So again, the student list generator is only available for the goal survey responses. Um, so the only thing you're able to ask the computer to give you is the names of students who answer future plans questions in specific ways or the student choice questions in specific ways. So in order for a student's name to appear on a list, the students have to opt in. So there's a question during the survey that says, would you like your school counselor or some other educator in your school district to send you individualized information about how to plan, prepare, and pay for college? And then we give the kids a note that if they say yes, they're giving us permission to release their name, contact information, birth date, and other demographic information like their gender, ethnicity. Um, we're, they're giving us permission to release that to their school counselor um, and our other uh, educators in their district along with their survey responses. So, okay. And then in option two, um, um, it, it, to, to opt in, the second opt-in question is we're asking students, would you like Indiana colleges to receive information about how they answered those, those same questions about their future plans and the choices that they're making? And if they, opt, if they say yes, then that gives our organization permission to release um, that information as well as the students' um, 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 identifiable information to Indiana colleges um, that they have indicated an interest in during the survey. So if they haven't said that they are interested in Purdue, we're not going to release their information to Purdue. Um, that's part of the FERPA requirement. But if they said, yeah, we're interested in Purdue, um, and then and they also give us permission to release the information uh, to colleges, then, then we um, will share that information with the colleges that we're working with um, to receive that information. So, okay, so those are both opt-ins. If the students don't say yes, that they, you know, don't want individualized information, um, then, then we do not release their information to either the counselor or to Indiana colleges. So here's how that might work. Let's say um, the same question. Let's say that you're interested in finding those kids to get D's and F's and report cards and choose not to participate in extra help. Um, then you would tell our system to give you a list of the students who self-report getting D's and F's and also report that they're not choosing to participate in extra help. And the computer then will give you a list of students' email addresses. So you can um, just send those kids an email that just might say, you know, we've noticed, you know, on the survey you said that you um, didn't know where to find extra help. We wanted you to know that we have math tutoring after schools on Tuesdays and Thursdays and also during activity period on Wednesdays. So, you know, you can send an individualized um, uh, information, not to all students in your school, but to just those who showed a need for that information on the survey. So you can email information to, to the students, and in a minute you'll see you can also mail information to them. So here's another um, situation. Let's say you've got, you're in high school and you've got a Purdue rep coming to your building to talk about Purdue. You could ask the system to give you a list of email addresses for juniors and seniors who are interested in Purdue. And then you could just send those kids an email that says there's going to be a Purdue rep here on Thursday. You know, please come to the, to the office to get a pass. Um, okay, so, and then one more example. You could ask the um, system to give you a list of sophomores 
who plan to go to college, who report that they earn A's and B's in the report card, but also say that they do not plan to take an AP or a dual credit course in high school. And then you may decide that you want to send a letter maybe to their parents in the mail, inviting their parents and the student to come to some special program that you're going to have at school to introduce college-level courses to sophomores um, before they schedule for their, for their junior classes. So there's all different things, ways that you can target students who need individualized guidance. And then you can send emails or you can just get a list of those students' names to invite them to a special program during lunch. Um, or you can send a, a postal mail to them. So that's the student list generator. So you've got two different ways to get data. One, you can get that group data to help you make decisions about your program design. And then two, you can get lists of students who need specific uh, information, um, targeted guidance information. So, okay. So let's talk then about how to set up the survey. So we've been talking about why the survey might be good to give. It helps you design your programs and target your individual guidance. Now let's talk about how to set it up. It's really quite easy to do. You go to the web page that's listed at the top of the screen here. And when you get to that web page, we're going to look at the left navigation bar. And you can see that in the school section, there's instructions. Um, and then there's a link to where the, you set up the survey. And then there's a link to, to where you get the student reports. On this page also, there's a link to where the students could go, would go to take the survey, although we're going to give the survey the students a direct link. And then also on this page, there's a link where the public can see the um, reports that are public, which is just the group data for the, um, for the goal survey, which is just the student plans and the student choices. So on the reports link that's in the school section, that gives you um, uh, access to the student list generator and to group data that's not available to the public. Okay, so we've clicked on the setup link. That takes us to the um, setup page. And you can see there in the middle of the page that the administrator's instructions are there. Um, the video that we are recording right now will appear uh, hot in this section. You can see the questions if you want to uh, look ahead of time. And then we've also given you a link to the primary survey tally sheet. Um, I'll show you that for a second. And then we also give you a link to just a presentation we did for um, the Indiana College and Career um, Admissions um, Group um, that um, about the 2000 and 18 survey results if you want to see like the survey results and how they might be used to inform uh, decisions. And then down at the bottom of this page there's instructions but um, and, and um, yeah so we can go from there. So okay so on the survey setup page um, so now I'm going to click on the survey setup page um, you're going to be asked to enter a username and password these were sent to all Indiana schools in 2010. Um, if you are outside of Indiana when you uh, applied for uh, um, uh, registration um, um, to our, when you applied to set up your uh, survey, you were given a username and password. Um, so, um, but if you've lost or forgotten your information, you can just e send, um, uh, download the form that's, list that's listed right here, and then please send that to us as an email attachment, and the instructions are in the form on how to do that. If you want to go in to view a demo school, you can just use the username demo123 in both the username and the password, and that will pull up the demo school if you just kind of want to see um, a, a demo school site. Okay. So if you are participating in one of our initiatives, either redesigning school counseling or guiding all kids, you can also access um, the setup through your process page. So you would go to your process page, 
you scroll down to you come to you come to the data collection section, and then in step 15, where it says collect uh, student survey data, in right here on the enter icon, that will take you also to the survey setup page. Okay, so after you're logged in, you'll go to the um, survey admin page, and you'll click on the enter icon for survey setup. And when you go there, you're going to be asked a question, would you like to include all four survey questions in your survey, survey question sets in your student survey? The default is yes. When you first open this up, it'll say yes. If you decide that you don't want to include some survey question sets, um, you would just click no. And then if you click no, Plans and choices, that's default for everyone. You can't get rid of that one. But you can get rid of the other three question sets. So the guidance needs, the counseling needs, and the perceptions of the school counselors. You can get rid of those question sets. So, And that's up to each individual school. Um, if you're working for the, the RAMP uh, award or the Indiana Gold Star School Counseling Award, um, we you you do need to include all four question sets so that you have enough information data to make decisions as you're designing those programs okay so after you have set that up and saved on that page then the um the the system will create survey codes for you so um you're we're back to the survey administration page and now we have set up the survey, so we don't need to click on the enter icon anymore. Um, and you'll see that while the first time we went to the administration page, we had no codes in there, we now have codes. These are the codes that you will give students that they will enter into the system before they take the survey. And when students enter those codes, the um, the the they will that will customize their individual survey so that it includes only the questions for that their grade. And also it tells the, our computer to include that student surveys when we tally up the responses for your schools. So those survey codes are really important and it's really important that they're accurate. Okay, so in the bottom section um, is instructions for how to administer the survey again. And we just give you some instructions about planning, um, um, how to distribute the survey administrator instruction. There's a link to that. And then um, after the survey is set up, these other links will become hot. Um, there's a couple things we want to show you. Um, and that is in entering the tallies uh, from the, the primary grade survey, um, K through two, this is once the survey, once you've set up the survey, this is where that will um, become hot. And I'll show you that setup page in a second, or that tally page in a second. And then also um, the number of surveys that, that have been submitted will tally here. So right now it's zero because the school uh, has not surveyed yet. But as soon as the schools, um, as soon as the students start surveying, that will that number will will increase. We'll also uh, calculate for you the percentage of students in your school that have surveyed. Um, and then you're also able to open up a list of students that have taken the goal survey. Remember, that's the survey that's linked to the student um, names and email addresses. Um, so we're able to tell you which students took that survey. Um, that's helpful because if a teacher forgets the survey or whatever, and you're not getting up to the, the high percentage that you want in the previous question, you can actually go in and try to figure out which students haven't surveyed and then try to access those students. And then after 10 students have surveyed or more, um, you can access the survey reports um, here. So I'm going to show you a, a, in a minute a, a slide that has that, that screen on it. So OK, so let's go back. And I, I want to look at the. Um, how how we tally the surveys for the primary grades. So when you download, let me go back, when you click here on the tools, in the tools column, the, the computer will give you this um, set of instructions and the tally sheets. 
So the the K2 teachers would just say, you know, what grade they are surveying, how many students are participating. They would ask students to put their heads down, and then they're just going to read the questions to them. Did you save money um, this school year for college? And it may be if this is kindergartners, they may not even know what college is. So I know I didn't collect money for college, um, didn't save money for college. Um, did you play in a sports team or attend a club meeting this year? You know, a kindergartner would know that they play on a, you know, a, a, a league, a, you know, a kindergarten league for basketball or whatever. And they would raise their hands, and the teacher would count that up, and and um, and and write the number in there. So okay, then on the survey reports page. So again, I'm going to go back to screens. Now we're down to survey reports. When you click this icon in the reports column, you'll get this screen. And you can see that here is the summary report. You can ask for a report for all questions, just the plans and choices, just the guidance needs, just the, the counseling needs, or just the perceptions. Notice some of the questions are in yellow. Um, that means that these uh, group reports are, this data is never available um, to the public. It's only available to the counselors and schools. In, you can do a drill down report by grade level. And I can also drill down by all of the federal student groups as well as a few other student groups. I can create my own student group. So I could say, I'd like to see just the responses for students for um, fifth grade, you know, um, African American students um, or fifth grade Hispanic students or fifth grade free and reduce, reduce lunch students and pull up your individual group. Um, or you can use the student list generator. And in this situation, you, you spell out, I want to see a list of names and email addresses or mailing addresses for students who answer these questions in this way. And then that will, um, that will spit out the list of, of student names for you. Um, okay. So let's talk then quickly about the administration of the survey. The survey window is open for many months. It opens March 15th and closes on June 15th. In terms of how much time is required to take the survey, that depends on what grade level you're giving the, student, the survey to. Here's the number of survey questions. So you can see in a for a kindergartner, there's only 11 questions. For a sixth grader, there's 51 questions between the two different surveys. Um, so the, the older students have more questions, or, and the younger students have fewer questions. Now, at first glance, this may seem like a large number of questions. Um, you know, we're looking at what is the 79 questions for a senior. But the questions go very, very quickly because of how they're written. So basically, we're just asking the students, did you do these things? Did you help one of your friends uh, this year? Yes or no? You know, did you participate in tutoring outside of classes this year? Yes. Did you um, or your parents attend a program? to help them learn how to pay for college, um, not sure. So when we have um, watched in schools um, take the survey, and when schools have um, reported to us how long it takes the students to take the survey, the um, most students, almost all students, are spending seven to 10 seconds per question. So yes, there are a lot of questions, but the questions are designed to go very, very quickly seven to 10 seconds per question. So what we're suggesting is let's allow 15 seconds per question. That's more time than what students need. Um, and if we do that, then <clears throat> when we're looking at the two surveys for kindergartners that just have you know eight questions on them, we're looking at probably six, six minutes to, to take those questions. Um, if we're looking, I'm sorry, these have 11 questions on them. <clears throat> and we're thinking total four minutes for the goal survey um, and four minutes for the root cause survey. So total, um, I, I said it wrong again, four minutes for the goal survey, two minutes for the root cause survey. So a total of six, questions, six minutes. If I look at the time required um, as 15 seconds per question for a senior, um, you know, we're estimating at 15 seconds per question, about 17 minutes for the goal survey, 23 minutes for the root cause survey. 
So a total of, what is that, 40, 40 minutes for the two question sets. Now, um, you can decide to give the two question sets in two different sittings. So it's possible, and we'll talk about this in a sec, it's possible to decide, okay, with my seniors, I'm going to give the goals survey during one homeroom and then I'm going to give the root cause survey during the next homeroom. So you can split the, the, the two surveys into two different sittings. Okay, so one of the question, one of the decisions you're going to have to make is are we going to ask our teachers or our as counselors, are we going to give both questions both surveys in one sitting or are we going to separate them into two sittings? Okay. Another question we always get is, you know, how do we get all the, the students to computers in grades 3, 12? Well, a couple of tips. First of all, not all students have to survey at the same time. So it might make more sense if you're in a high school to survey your seniors in the end of March before they get busy with AP testing and other things, um, where it might make more sense to survey your freshmen in the beginning, in the middle of May when um, you're looking for something for the freshmen to do when seniors are going through graduation rehearsal. So it's really important to understand that not all students have to survey at the same time. It's also really helpful to help your administrators and teachers understand the value of the survey, um, how it's going to help you in your school figure out how to better motivate students, how to help with things that tend to make students um, less successful learners in the classroom. Um, so if, if your administrators and teachers understand the value of the results and how you can use those results, it tends to make them um, more receptive to helping with the administration of the survey. So in terms of how to get the students to computers, most schools will use the teacher-administered survey. So they'll provide for the teachers instructions for how to give the survey and the student codes. And then in an elementary school, they'll just ask the teachers to survey their students sometime during this broad survey window. And then in a high school or middle school, they'll ask teachers to survey all their students in second period or fourth period um, in the survey window. If every teacher surveys their second period students, you would have every student surveyed in the school. So um, so most of our schools use a teacher-administered survey, but some have the counselors administer the survey. And in that case, the, the counselors are bringing groups of students, maybe you know one English classroom at a time, um, into the computer lab over several days. So you know the, the um, sixth grade English students may come on Monday and then the um, seventh period English students come on Tuesday or, or however you set that up and then the counselors administer the survey. Another option that we don't like um, is that it is possible to have the students administer the survey to themselves. So you would just give the students the codes and the, the website and then you know maybe you'd put information in the student newsletter about that and just ask the students on their own personal time or you know, whenever they can get to a computer to take the survey. And then it's up to the students to administer that survey to themselves. Again, that's not a, an option that we like because we tend to, to not get a lot of students who follow through with that. Um, the teacher administered seems, to, from our experience, to be the, the best option. And then for some schools, the, the counselors will bring in small groups of students to survey. Okay, so in terms of then, how, what does the teacher do when they're ready to administer the survey? So the teacher would post the survey URL, which is asaisurveys.org, and the grade level codes for the survey that they wish to give. Um, if the teacher is only giving one survey, then they would just put up the one set of codes. And then they're just going to you know, explain to the students, go to the website, enter the appropriate code for the grade level, and then take the survey. In the administrator instructions, there's a little bit more detail to this um, where the administrators would explain to the students why this student survey is so important, how the results are going to be used, and that the more honest the students are, 
the better it's going to help the adults in the building to be able to address their needs. Um, so, um, so yeah, so if the, the teachers are only giving one survey, they would just put up one set of codes. If the teachers are giving both surveys during that one sitting, then they would put up both codes, same set of instructions, but then they would say, when you're finished taking the first survey, then go back to the website, enter the second code, and then take that survey. So, okay. So, um, just the last thing is that I wanted you to have a look at what the students see when they log into ASAISurveys.org. Um, we've already looked at some of the questions that they'll be asked, but in this situation, um, this is where they first go in. They put the code in. We give them a note about confidentiality, and we tell them that they don't have to participate. Um, very rarely, as a matter of fact, I can't even think of a time where a student has opted out. I think that the kids understand that this survey is going to help adults help them, and so they kind of want to give you information. So, um, so yeah, so the kids just put their code in, and then they click Next. And that takes them to the, um, the 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 section where they begin entering their demographics, and then on to the first set of questions. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Um, there's our phone number and also an email address where you can get um, answers to any of the questions that you might have about administering the survey. So thank you. Um, for a number of things, one for caring about your students and for wanting to um, gather uh, data that would help you design the best guidance and counseling program to best meet the needs of your students. Um, I know that when schools are designing data-driven school counseling programs, those programs tend to better target the needs of their kids. So thank you on behalf of your students and, and on behalf of our organization for well, as well for going to this extra mile to, um, to help design a data-driven school counseling program. Thank you so much.